and welcome to the weekly Sunday Standard News Review. This is a platform where we discuss big news developments of this week. And this week we are talking the informal sector in Botswana, especially during the pandemic. We also talk about the role of the informal sector and its potential. And to discuss this topic further, I'm joined by Victor Badwin, the business editor of both the Sunday Standard and the Telegraph newspapers. Welcome, Victor. Thank you, Spencer. My name is Spencer Mohapi, and I'll be the host for the program this week. Uh, Victor, there is, I think, ample evidence that uh, since the pandemic started, uh, the informal sector in Botswana has been growing very fast. What really drives this growth? <coughs> Thank you very much, Spencer, for the question. Uh, the growth really is motivated by the decline on the formal sector side. We realize that there have not been new jobs on the formal sector side. They have been, uh, despite the SOE, there have been job losses. Mm -hmm. And there's also those people who are fearing that their jobs could go. So they have started preparing for the future. Mm -hmm. And in, in their preparation, they've found a space in the informal sector. They're trying to prepare for the future. So that's what is bringing up the, the, the big growth. Other than that, also is an issue of Botswana. We might impose a lot of uh, stuff from South Africa, so we we, st we still we still see a few Botswana go into the agro processing space, mm -hmm. producing tomatoes, producing eggs, as you might know, and and, and and chicken. So those are the people who are now moving into the the informal sector, and as such, is showing some significant growth. Thank you. And if we are to talk to the uh, demographics of the people enter in this particular space. Would it be correct to say there's also a groundswell of uh, college-educated younger people into it? Yes, that, that's one uh, positive thing about this, this growth. We realize that uh, for so many years, the government has been paying uh, for young Botswana to go to universities and, and colleges. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, they have not been able to find a space in the formal sector where they wanted to, to, to get jobs. So the alternative that they have was to start their own small enterprises. So they've come into this space, they've, we have seen quite a number of uh, college graduates come into this space to earn a living, so to speak. So it's, it's a positive in the sense that uh, uh, the quality of products and the quality of services that is offered in, in the informal sector is now uh, different from what we saw maybe five years ago. Because we are speaking about a kind of people who could do uh, uh, a lot of things. They, we, we are now speaking digital economy. We, we, they, they could go into, into social media and advertise. They could uh, entice the, the people to come and buy their products and services. Yes, and uh, let's talk about uh, the government response, especially on capturing data from this particular sector. And the biggest complaint so far has been that there is no information about the informal sector. What has been the response of the Botswana government special? Yeah, they, they, that, that is one unfortunate part. For so many years, you remember, Spencer, that even in, in, in April 2020, when the government was putting up a relief fund for the formal sector, it was very difficult for government to actually help the informal sector because there was no information available, readily available from the informal sector. So what the government then did through the local enterprise authority, they put up a program to register the SMEs both in the informal and formal sector to actually have a database of, 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 of the informal sector. So what they did is uh, was to register and then at the beginning of the late last year and beginning of this year, they started rolling out a, a relief fund through a grant of 1,000 fuller to this informal sector who were already very registered. The, the government has also partnered with the likes of UNDP to actually put up mm -hmm. a study and a survey to, to see the potentials that this uh, sector could bring to the economy. Yes, and uh, uh, you touched on this issue about uh, the kind of people who are coming into it. Let's talk about uh, these young people, they are technology savvy, they could use technology for marketing purposes. Uh, what is the role of digitization really in the whole potential of the sector going forward? The role is big. Remember, we are a country that is part of the African continent bloc, and we've uh, been told about the free Africa Free Trade Agreement that we signed as a country. And if you are to go anywhere, if you are to, because ultimately we want to have some of these companies in the informal sector graduating to become formal. 
uh, we want a uh, stake for the indigenous Botswana to own a space in the formal sector. And it starts with the it start at the informal sector part of it. They need to prove themselves from there. So the fact that college graduate and university graduate are in that space could actually speed up mm -hmm. in the process of some of these enterprises actually formalizing or becoming formal entities and ultimately playing a role in the continental market. And lastly, uh, Victor, uh, for the informal sector to really grow in any economy, really, there has to be an appetite on the part of established businesses to give this uh, informal sector jobs, to uh, work together with them. Uh, is there such appetite here? Uh, I would say so far not, but uh, my, my uh, hope or my, my, my uh, I'm consoled by the fact that, like we said, the caliber of the people who are now playing in this space are the kind of people that, even if the formal sector was not to uh, formally approach them, they could still make their way to formalize their own businesses and ultimately take over that formal sector. So that is, we just need a deliberate um, or an affirmative action from the government side, particularly through Leia and CEDA, to say even the likes of CEDA, they should not just be focusing on the issue of finance, but they should also look at the issue of development, because mm -hmm. part of their mandate is also to develop yes. uh, agents or, or citizen-owned enterprises. So if you could have a, an affirmative action to actually help them, they could grow into that space to a point where they could take over from some of these franchises, because literally what some of these franchises say is things that we have here, chicken and uh, potatoes, and you could easily move into that space. And uh, shortly, Victor, the, the formal sector is on the decline in this country. Uh, is there any how we see the informal sector maybe taking advantage of that and maybe filling the void? Yeah, already the signs are there. That is why I, initially, I, 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 I pointed out that a part of the people who are now in the formal sector, there are people who are actually working in the formal sector. They have started preparing for the future. And chances are that in the next year, in the next 12 to 24 months, if they lose that, uh, their jobs that side, they will be sustained by the small business they, they've started. Thank you very much, Victor. And that's all we had time for this week. See you again next week.